Right, today's rehab session is about strengthening your lower back. Now, this is really, really good for people who have actually injured their lower back and they're on their way back to doing things like lifting, squatting, deadlifting, and they've done the core work, they're working on their glutes, they're working maybe some hip hinging work, but they haven't really got enough strength in their lower back. Now, this can happen sometimes when you've injured the muscle tissue in your lower back, and sometimes it's like you'd call it a strain. There might be an underlying disc problem there that you've cleared up but you've still got the muscle weakness. Now, people with back pain here, and especially that goes down into the hips, if you've got pain going into those tissues, you're probably gonna get some deactivation and then some weakness. If you strain that muscle tissue because you've lifted something, you're probably gonna have some weakness as well. And most people work on their core, work on their glutes, maybe work on some patterns of movement, but when they get back to deadlifting or squatting, they still get a bit of back pain. And it's not always how strong your core or your glutes are, it might be because your back simply needs muscle strengthening. And it's hard, and a lot of people don't do it well enough. So I'm gonna give you some progressions to go from very easy stuff to get you in on board with learning how to get your back a little bit stronger in the lower part, and then building up to more sports specific stuff. So the first thing I want to get people doing is actually getting their lumbar extensors, okay? Getting those muscle tissues that work as like a stabilizer when you lift, but also they work as an isotonic movement when you bend forward naturally. So if you imagine I'm gonna bend forward and pick up something and come up, I'm doing lumbar extension there. I need those muscles to actually extend my back. So same with I was gonna pick up something from there, pick up something light, I'll round my back, I'll use my lumbar extensors in conjunction with the rest of my body to lift me up. But if I was deadlifting something heavy, I use my lumbar extensors to be a stabilizer, and so I don't move there, and I move at the hip, okay? But for those people who need a bit of strength in there, we're gonna work on the actual muscle tissue in sort of a hybrid, if you like, from doing a little bit of lumbar extension and some hip extension at the same time. So we're using those two things together. So there's a bit of isometric work and a bit of isotonic work in every little exercise. The first one I want you to work on is going from this four point position here like that, okay? And trying to go from here and lifting up in this position here. Now you might think that's pretty easy stuff, okay? And for some people it is, but some people it's really, really hard because you've got to try and stabilize through here at the same time. What I don't want you doing is just working on straight hip extension like that and jamming up your lower back and really loading up those muscle tissues. Remember, this is a very low level exercise. It's the first thing that people work on. So it's important that once you've got your neutral spine organized, you've got that ability to brace through your core here and turn that on, then you go for your straight leg and you go from a hip extension and there's gonna be a little bit of back extension at the top. So mostly no back extension for the first part here. So that doesn't move from there to there. When you get up in a hip extension, then you go a little bit more and you get a little bit extra hip extension. And that's where you work from an isometric type movement with those muscles to stabilize the initial movement and then do a little bit more into extending the lower back just a little bit. I think the crucial thing about that is, is not extending initially. Like the first thing you do is don't extend the lower back. It's the last thing you do, okay? Now, to take that one step further, what you could work on if you find that a little bit easy, is work on a ball. Some people work on a sofa on a ball. And do the same thing here like that, into this position. And then you can really feel the feedback of your tummy on here. Okay, you can feel that whether you're pushing down into the ball or whether you're keeping that tone and keeping it braced. So from this position here, you can go and work on trying to get some more extension there. And you'll really feel it in your glutes. So that's good glute activation, right? but you're really aiming for the lower back to be doing the work. So from here, drawing in, up, and then extending without overcooking it. You don't want to be doing this sort of work and jamming up and extending that lower back too much. There's no point doing that. It's just going to make you sore. All right? We want to get to the point where we're just getting a little bit of tone, a little bit of activation through there, building up that base strength to do the harder stuff later. So once you progress on that ball and there's no, you know, you're feeling a little bit better, there's less pain. Remember, some of these exercises can be pain relievers because, you know, if you get pain from having a weak lower back, you get it more activated and a little bit more strength, you'll have less pain. So the next thing I want you to try and work on is actually moving that lower back up from flexion to extension, just like you would if you bent over 
picked up something off the floor and came up again. Okay, now this is not the heavy stuff, this is just the light stuff. So again, you could use a ball for this, but what you've got to try and do is make sure you sort of dig your, not dig, but make sure you fir firmly plant it with your knees and your feet here. So I'd probably point your toes and bring your toes into dorsiflexion, I should say, and get into there so you've got a bit of grip. And then from this position, you're going to do an upright Y. So again, drawing this on, just remember it's important to have that co-contraction around your spine, so you're not just extending with no abdominals. So from that point there, you're going to come up with your th thumbs, and then use your whole back to then extend at the top. And just stop at the point where you're just about to feel fatigue or that jamming feeling through that lumbar spine. Because this will work your QLs, work your lumbar deep extensors through here. It'll work them to extend your lower back, and you've got to try and make sure you've got a bit of glute on there at the same time. You're trying to tell your body, when I extend, as in when I bend forward, pick up something off the floor, I want my extensors working, I want them you know, stronger, but also want my glutes to work in a hinge to help out, okay? You're not just going to bend forward and not use your glutes and your hammies. They're going to help stabilize and extend the hip and help lift the back up in that posterior chain type fashion. So let's just run through that again. Drawing in, thumbs up first, get that up a bit of load and then extend upwards as much as you can without losing stability and then slowly down. Nice, slow, controlled reps, keeping your core and a bit of glute on to stabilize, to learn that pattern of movement. And you'll find that that sort of movement helps you with this whole bending forward, coming up. That nice bending over, rounding your lower back, coming up, extending, but working everything to help you up, not just one thing. So that's the sort of the baseline stuff. Then what I'd try and work on is getting things a little bit harder. And that involves going to doing, I'll show you here, hip extension off the bed, all right? So this thing will definitely load up your back a little more. Now, that we were working on lifting up your back, this one we're lifting up your legs. So you'll need probably, you know, a kitchen table or even your bed at home, that's the thing we've got a plinth obviously we can use um, to hold on to so you can use your legs as the lever. So the first thing I'd do is work on perhaps one leg to get the movement right, then work on the two legs to get the load. So the one leg movement is just trying to work out how you're going to hang on, keep your core on here, keep neutral here, and again, same sort of movement there, making sure you know what you're doing here. And if you've done this on the ball before, you know what you're sort of working on. Okay, so this point here, and then you think, okay, I've got to lift two legs now. So you're going to stabilize, draw on here first, don't hold your breath, and then work on just floating in your feet up and lifting. And you might get halfway and then down. Just a little bit of load. The first little bit is you don't want to over, over extend your back and jam it up. We want to just make sure we add a bit of load into the lower back so it stabilizes and handles the weight of the legs. So this point here, I'm just going to come up a little bit higher now and then come down. Again, nice, slow, controlled. Now this will definitely make you do hip extension, of course, and you're using your glutes, but your lower back is going to take the load. So you'll come up eventually going as sort of high as you can, and you probably won't, you'll probably find you won't actually overarch your back too much. Okay? Now, if people get pain with this, the load's too much, they're not ready for it. You need to go back and do the other stuff. But there's no pain, only fatigue, then that's okay. Because as with all exercises involved, muscle fatigue, you build that up, you'll get stronger and stronger and stronger if you go carefully and slowly. There's no point doing this too quick or too fast or too much slow. From that point, some people could add on some load to the ankles, okay? So you can put a weight on, hold a plate, hold a kettlebell, that sort of thing, and that'll increase the load a little bit more, and I'll show you that. So what I mean by adding weight is maybe just a dumbbell. Now this is only four kilos, but when you put it, say, between your legs, and again, You've got to hold on to this thing, so you've got to keep your legs together. Um, that weight there is on the end of your leg, meaning the le it's about the leverage and how long your legs are. The longer your legs, obviously the more load through your lower back. So don't overcook it and put something too heavy on there. And the, the way you gauge that is obviously how you're feeling your lower back with your fatigue. I don't want any pain with this, but you've got to make sure that you can actually get to the same height as you did without the weight. So. If you're doing this, and say you got to horizontal, and now you can only sort of get to there, 
then the weight's too heavy, so you need to drop that weight down, okay? And remember, any little bit of weight is more, more load, so it doesn't really matter, because if you try and do too much load and don't get the height, it's really a waste of time, and you're not gonna get the full benefit out of it. So making sure you can keep that core on, lift it up right into up there, and you'll find that that's way harder. Of course, your reps and sets can go down a little bit, but if you can only get three or four out, it's too heavy. Okay. So the final section of this is doing a lumbar extension off a bed or a plinth like we've got. Now, you could easily do this in the gym or you could do it at home, but you need a partner. So I've used Joe here because they've got to hold your legs down while you're doing it. Now, I'm going to give you some tips on this so you don't go and make your back more sore. Make sure you really isolate what you're trying to achieve. So this one, you're going to do lumbar extension. Now, there's going to be some hip extension in there as well, but what we just want to make sure of is your really making sure you turn your core on, okay, and you're using your hip extensors to do your lumbar extension as well. You just don't want to go into hyper extension. So what I mean is, when you come up, you don't want to go and really overcook it and go into this hyper extension like this, okay? You want to come up just to neutral, so you're in that hip extension and lumbar extension, okay? Now this first one is an isometric hold. So you're gonna go and try and get everything sorted here, get that core on, Make sure your glutes are going on to do that hip extension, and then you come up into that lumbar extension and just hold it there as the isometric hold. So that's where you're gonna start feeling it through that lower back, feeling a little bit of muscle fatigue in here, making sure your glutes on, making sure your core's on, you're breathing up in here, you're not holding your breath, and just keeping that position for an extended period of time. And obviously you've got to try and at least get to 30 seconds. You wanna be building to a minute if you possibly can without the pain. Okay, and that's your first one. Then, what you wanna work on is doing repetitions of that and trying to get that quality of movement going well, again, without hyperextending. So, nice and slow reps, turning on all the muscles in that posterior chain, shoulders back a bit, holding there, and then slowly down, and going for repetitions of this. Instead of a isometric hold that you go for endurance, this is going for repetitions, and getting into that lumbar extension and really diving into that lower back. Now, once you've done that, the progression, of course, is a weight like this, okay? So you can do a mixture of doing isometric holds of the plate, so coming in, isometric holds like that, or you can do the repetition work where you're doing that lumbar spine extension with a bit of hip extension into there to try and strengthen up that lower back. So there's a nice little progression of exercises to get you doing lumbar extension and to strengthen up those muscles right down deep in the lumbar spine. Of course, to complement all the core work you've been doing to help you with bending over, picking up items, deadlifting, that sort of thing. Now, this is really good for home, but if you've got the luxury of going to the gym still, then you can start using a Roman chair and a glute ham raise machine. See how you go, see you next time.